All right, just want to take a look at a uh, flat Earth here. Um, over the past few weeks, been having discussions with people about this, and of course, you get the same uh, rebuttals. Of course, based on indoctrination, and it seems like no matter what you say, uh, for most people, um, of course, always the few who uh, you know say that's a good question, that's a good point. But most of the time, you're going to get um, these assumptions based on childhood indoctrination. Um, like, for instance, we're too small. And like I said, um, we're not stationary, immovable observers. Um, our experience of roaming this plane, or let's just say this world to be neutral, counts as evidence. Um, an ant roaming a cannonball, let's say, uh, a cannonball, let's say it's 10 feet, just saying. The ant would know that it was roaming a ball. Um, it would be able to differentiate that. Now, we can't talk to the ant, but uh, we can assume by its motions, it would understand that the shape it was roaming was spherical, not planar. It would just understand this. Um, and, of course, the ant on a football field wouldn't be able to see the end of the football field. So the people who use the too small analogy, they don't use that same analogy when they ask the question, why can't we see the sun forever or all the time, 24 hours a day? Um, then then they go back to, you know, we say because you're too small, you're in a plane. Oh, then they just go to the next uh, knee jerk question or qualm. But here I want to look into the perspective issue again, because here's, of course, a high altitude balloon shot. Uh, we can say this image or this balloon is over pick a country. It doesn't really matter. Um, now, personally, to believe in the globe, this would have to be the North Pole. It could only be the North Pole because, of course, um, if we take this shot from the space station, this is real time, supposedly. Um, supposedly, since this is in real time, the Earth being a globe, it does have a up and down orientation um, because you'll hear people say there's no up and down in space, which is ludicrous. And that, that's mind boggling. That's a disrespect. <laughs> To anybody's common sense, no up and down. When clearly there's up and down, um, as in this picture. So these supposed astronauts are uh, in space, but as Jaron even said, show me these buildings. Zoom in on the buildings and show them uh, sticking to the globe, uh, sort of like stalactites or whatever um, in this orientation versus the people here, or the, of course, no people live on the North Pole, but up here would be the only place that people could live upright. We know it doesn't make any sense. So, um, because you would be changing in degrees in real time, um, just like on the uh, train footage, a high-speed train footage, if you watch it, of course, it's perpetually horizontal. And uh, like a train going from Northern Europe to Southern Europe never experiences the uh, change in degrees in real time. The perspective would change no matter what. You could say gravity makes it stick to the ball, but what about the change in perspective? It never changes. Um, the horizon always extends further. So we do have the uh, case where the horizon always rises to the eye level. And we also have the case when traveling the horizon always pushes back further because that proves that it's a visual perspective phenomenon, not a indication of a curve. So here, um, just common sense issues here with the beach shot. Supposedly, this is the curve. This is the start of the curve of the horizon. Now, they would argue that it's gradual, but of course, this line if it be a curve or a change in direction, it's pretty marked. So, um, you know, it's almost as if if there's a boat traveling here, let's just assume we have to be stationary because we don't. Um, 
if I were to shoot a bullet straight down this water, uh, supposedly, you know, that boat would not be hit because it went over the curve. Let's just say uh, I was assuming, you know, to keep it on track, if it were to travel here, 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 go out of my sight for, let's say, 10 minutes, and I shot a long-range bullet, uh, it would not hit. It should go into space, um, of course. Now, you can use the gravity excuse, but yet and still, in real time, in real time experience, that boat is over the curve. There's no way you would say, uh, if I shut that bullet, it's going to curve around the curve. You would not dare uh, assume such a thing. No sniper would assume that. Clearly, um, they wouldn't. Uh, because we know intuitively that that is not a curve. Uh, this is a plane. But this is supposedly Greece. Greece. Uh, I believe it's uh, what is this, Italy? Uh, where is it? Greece? I believe this is Greece. <laughs> I might have to uh, but whatever. Uh, this is Greece, Southern Europe. And here's Africa, Southern. Uh, if you go north, you get Northern Europe, and of course North Pole, etc. So if this is Greece, and let's say we're looking southward, this would be towards Africa. Now, I'm going to have to assume since this is a curve, that Africa is below this line, of course, which means Africa is downwards. If you can use your imagination, Africa would have to be below Greece. And people would say, yes, it is. It's southern. So let's say I turned around. Let's just assume. Uh, I know um, because it looks the same any fucking way, <laughs> so it doesn't matter. But uh, if we turn around... Now we're looking northern, northward. Okay, uh, so are we to assume, if we go over this curve, this ball, that northern Europe, just using an example, I know there's not necessarily a body of water, but are we to assume that northern Europe is down below this, what can we call it, this degree? It's a lower degree than this location are we to assume that the north pole is down below over this curve as if the north pole is below this degree uh i know the flat earthers get what i'm saying the point is this is nonsense and we know it this makes no real time sense um it's not as if if we keep traveling um we would go below Greece in order to get to the North Pole. No one would assume that uh, the North Pole was below Greece in real time, like in this picture. Um, it just doesn't make sense. Now, clearly, we know this is a uh, Photoshop. Uh, this is the flat Earth, of course. They've uh, curved it due to uh, lens or uh, Photoshop distortion. And, of course, they flipped it to a uh, vertical orientation or a near vertical orientation. So we know they did that, but. You know, it looks believable to the uh, untrained eye. So, but in the event, um, again, the North Pole would be below Greece. Or wherever this is. I think this is in, uh, whatever. Hawaii or whatever. But, this, even if this is Hawaii, where is the North Pole? Uh, if this is Southern, uh, we would have to go below here. But again, this this perspective is still one of being at the North Pole. No matter where you go. Everyone experiences the perspective of being on the North Pole in real time. Um, only when we go in our imaginations can it even make sense that uh, we would experience a sphere as a plane. That is nonsense. Um, with that same reasoning, you could walk over a mountain, sort of like uh, I remember being on Stone Mountain. Of course, there's gates and everything. But... If you're going to say that going over this supposed curve would feel just like a plane due to gravity, then why don't you walk over <laughs> the curve of a mountain or just a high uh, topographical feature such as a stone mountain or whatever? It doesn't have to be a sharp cliff, but just to say if you were to walk over that curve in real time, you would start to notice that you were beginning to tumble. Uh, of course you would, like I said, in real time. In real time, Hawaii is not the North Pole. 
So therefore, uh, of course, we can't, no one's going to say we have to travel upwards to the North Pole. So why would you assume that we have to go down yonder to get to the North Pole? You know that's not true. It makes no sense. Uh, the globe is nonsense. Total nonsense. The Earth is flat. Uh, this is the perspective you get from any altitude or from any location with a high altitude because the Earth is flat. It's that simple. Peace up and down in space which is ludicrous and that, that's mind-boggling that's a disrespect <laughs> to anybody's common sense no up and down when clearly there's up and down um as in this picture so these supposed astronauts are uh in space but as jaren even said show me these buildings zoom in on the buildings and show them uh sticking to the globe uh, sort of like stalactites or whatever um, in this orientation versus the people here or the, of course no people live on the North Pole but up here would be the only place that people could live upright we know it doesn't make any sense so um, because you would be changing in degrees in real time um, just like on the uh, train footage a high speed train footage if you knee jerk question or qualm but here i want to look into the perspective issue again because here's of course a high altitude below shot uh we can say this image or this balloon is over pick a country it doesn't really matter um now personally to believe in the globe this would have to be the North Pole. It could only be the North Pole. Because, of course, uh, if we take this shot from the space station, this is real time, supposedly. Um, supposedly, since this is in real time, the Earth being a globe, it does have a up and down orientation. Um, because you'll hear people say, there's no, if you watch it, of course, it's perpetually horizontal. And uh, like a train going from Northern Europe to Southern Europe never experiences the uh, change in degrees in real time. The perspective would change no matter what. You could say gravity makes it stick to the ball, but what about the change in perspective? It never changes. Um, the horizon always extends further. So we do have the uh, case where the horizon always rises to the eye level. And we also have the case when traveling the horizon always pushes back further because that proves that it's a visual perspective phenomenon not a indication of a curve so here um just common sense um an ant roaming a cannonball let's say um uh, a cannonball let's say it's 10 feet just saying the ant would know that it was roaming a ball. Um, it would be able to differentiate that. Now, we can't talk to the ant, but uh, we can assume by its motions, it would understand that the shape it was roaming was spherical, not planar. Um, it would just understand this. Um, and, of course, the ant on a football field wouldn't be able to see the end of the football field. So the people who use the too small analogy they don't use that same analogy when they ask the question, why can't we see the sun forever or all the time, 24 hours a day? Um, then then they go back to, you know, we say because you're too small, you're in a plane. Oh, then they just go to the next. <laughs> all right. Just want to take a look at a flat earth here. Um, over the past few weeks, been having discussions with people about this and, of course, you get the same uh, rebuttals, of course, based on indoctrination. And it seems like no matter what you say, uh, for most people, um, of course, always the few who, uh, you know, say that's a good question, that's a good point. But most of the time, you're going to get um, these assumptions based on childhood indoctrination. Um, like, for instance, we're too small. And like I said, um, we're not stationary, immovable observers. 
um, our experience of roaming this plane, or let's just say this world to be neutral, counts as evidence. 